is that the world must recognize that the movement uh, against Russia to destroy Russia and its uh, intervention into what might be characterized as modern history based on the full-blown advent, the, the whole colonial capitalist social system, the aggression that was initiated against Russia uh, reached an extraordinarily kind of intensity in 1917. Uh, this was the beginning of what we see now occurring in Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict as it has been, as it's being characterized. I think it's extremely important to understand that because in 1917, the Russian revolution occurred. And this is the thing that brought Russia uh, to an element of what might be characterized as modernity. It was not a movement from feudalism to capitalism as happened, as did happen with, with most of Europe. And as you know, the movement from feudalism to capitalism is something that happened on the backs of enslaved African people and other colonized peoples around the world, but particularly against Africans. It, is the, it was that that Karl Marx referred to as primitive accumulation of capital, the startup of the entire thing. Russian modernity was not achieved through that process. The modernity was achieved through the process of an assault on the whole uh, colonial capitalist system. And this was the thing that made it a threat to the entire white world. And so you saw all of the European countries in America included, they invaded Russia at that time to try to destroy uh, the Soviet Union. The only relief came to Russia was at that moment during the Second Imperialist World War, they like to refer to as World War II, uh, when uh, they needed to utilize Russia uh, to protect that particular flank uh, in the war that they were engaged in with Germany. There was this united front, if you will, against fascism. The Russians, the United States and, and England and France and Russia participated, at, at least theoretically, in the struggle against Hitler in Germany. The truth of the matter, of course, is that Russia bore the brunt of that struggle, even though history is taught in the United States that how somehow the United States won that war. The United States didn't even enter the war until very late in the process, and Russia lost from 25 to 50 million people. And it was Russia that crushed uh, Hitler's armies and things like that. Sometime shortly thereafter that, the United States was really concerned. Also, the United States, by the way, along with the most of the colonial powers of Europe stood back and watched Germany attack Russia with the intent of seeing Germany and Russia destroy or weaken themselves. So even that war was used as a part of an offensive against Russia by the U.S. and what they like to call the West, which is the white colonial countries of the world. They used that even in the name of, of while they were talking about having a friendly relationship against what they characterize as fascism or Germany, they moved in a way that was designed to push forward the destruction of Russia or at what they referred to at the time as Soviet Russia because of the Soviet Union that came into existence shortly after the successful Russian Revolution. I think it's important, this happened more than 100 years ago, that we're talking about this initial invasion, the advent of the Russian Revolution. Uh, that was made in the name of overturning capital. But as you and I know, capitalism itself rests upon a foundation of colonialism. And so when the attack on Russia was really an attack ultimately to defend the colonial mode of production, 